Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So this morning we got yet another exciting commander from the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms pre-cons. Well, the Rakdos one, yeah, that's a mouthful. But yeah, this is a really exciting commander, Lorcan Warlock Collector. Lorcan is a 6-6 double flying that costs 5 black black. It has, whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value. If you do put it onto the battlefield under your control, it's a warlock in addition to its other types. And if a warlock you control would die, exile it instead. So this commander, though it does have a high converted mana cost, does seem to be doing quite a bit for you and it can be really powerful with the right build. I mean, essentially when any of your opponent's creatures die, you're getting them if you're willing to pay the life for them. Now, when those creatures do come into play under your control, they're going to be warlocks, and then when they die, they're going to be exiled. So, unfortunately, you can't just keep getting them back, though there actually is a way to do that. We'll talk about that here in a bit, but your opponents won't be getting them back either. So, actually, in a way, this commander can really hose certain strategies like graveyard or reanimation or even some aristocrat builds that work on getting creatures back. If they're going to be sacrificing their creatures for value, well, then you can actually, you know, pay some life and get those creatures for yourself. And of course, we're going to be also talking about some ways to, well, just destroy the right creatures that you want to destroy so that you can just gain control of them. And since you're in black, you've got plenty of ways to gain a ton of life. So yeah, you can either mitigate that life loss or actually, you know, gain life from destroying creatures or getting them, etc, etc. And we'll get to that here in a bit. But let's first just jump into a comparison card to this commander with Grave Betrayal. This is definitely the first card that I thought of when I saw this commander. I mean, it's even got the exact same mana cost. It's an enchantment for 5 black black and it says whenever a creature you don't control dies, return to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus plus one counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So there are definitely a lot of comparisons between this and Lorcan, our new commander. In fact, Lorcan is in a way essentially a great betrayal in your command zone. Now, one of the key differences is that Grey Betrayal doesn't make you pay life to actually get those creatures. On top of that, it does make the creature stronger by giving it a plus plus one counter, whereas our commander doesn't exactly do that. Now, the one potential advantage that the new commander has over Grey Betrayal, though, is that Grey Betrayal doesn't exile the creature when it dies. So again, if you are playing against a reanimation strategy or a graveyard synergistic deck where they can get that creature back, they've got that option. Regardless, yeah, a great betrayal in your command zone is a very exciting thing. So let's move along and talk about some cards that can work really well with this commander. First off, obviously you're going to want to gain a lot of life with this deck. You don't want to have to pick and choose which creatures that you want to steal. I mean, you can still do that, obviously, but I guess I should say you don't want to kind of be in a spot where a really valuable creature dies, but you can't justify giving up the amount of life that you need to give up to get it. So obviously a card like Gary, a fan favorite of many out there, is going to be fantastic in this deck. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, better known as Gary, is a 2-4 zombie for 3 black black, and it says when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life or X is your devotion to black, you gain life equal to life lost this way. So yeah, in a mono black deck, you're going to have plenty of black pips on the battlefield, and you're going to be gaining a ton of life from this. You know, on top of also draining your opponents for a ton. I mean, you can easily have upwards of 7 or 8 pips, and in that case, that's going to be what, 24 life gain just from one card? So yeah, that'll help you justify stealing some important creatures when they die. Now another slightly more expensive card that you might want to consider is Exsanguinate. It's a sorcery for X black black and it says each opponent loses X life, you gain life of your life loss this way. This is actually a pretty famous or should I say infamous black finisher because yeah, you just pour a lot of mana into that X and you drain all your opponents out. But in this deck, it can also kind of be an enabler again to actually grow your life total so that you're in a good spot no matter what creature dies. 
So even just casting this for, you know, seven mana in total, five mana into that X, you're going to gain 15 life, which again is going to be a couple of creatures most likely. And a much more budget-friendly option that can really help you out throughout the game and you can get down early is Death Greeter. It's a 1-1 Human Shaman for a black and it says whenever another creature dies, you may gain one life. So keep in mind that this counts all of your opponent's creatures as well, and yeah, there are going to be plenty of creatures dying throughout the game. Whether that's in combat, or a board wipe, or, you know, some target removal that you've got, you're going to be taking out creatures and, yeah, gaining a lot of life with this. Now, a bigger but slightly riskier version of this is Dross Harvester. It's a 4-4 horror for one black black, and it says, Protection from white, at the end of your turn, you lose four life. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, you gain two life. So, yes, there is that risk with this creature that you're going to be losing quite a bit of life. Again, that's four life on each of your turns. So that can add up, especially in combination with your commander, where you're going to be paying life to get creatures back into play. But again, this is basically two times a death greeter, because again, it's going to be gaining you two life for every single creature dying. So as long as on each trip around the table, at least two creatures die, you're going to be gaining that life back. And again, in a deck like this, we're going to have plenty of ways to ensure that creatures are dying quite a lot. And actually, potentially a more effective version of this card in a way is Thieving Amalgam. And yeah, this card's going to be great in this deck. It's a 6-7 Ape Snake for 5 Black Black, and it says at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you manifest the top card of that player's library. Basically, you get the top card of their library, and you put it into play as a 2-2 face down under your control. And then whenever a creature you control but don't own dies, its owner loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. So essentially, with each trip around the table, you are getting 3 creatures that you control but don't own because of those manifests. So even just with those creatures dying, if they do die, you're going to be gaining 6 life. Now, do keep in mind that unfortunately with the way that this commander is worded, it does say if a warlock you control would die, exile it instead. So because of that, unfortunately, when those warlocks that you basically stole from your opponents die and your commander's in play, you're not going to be gaining any life from them dying and your opponents won't be drained any either. Because technically they didn't die, they just got exiled, so yeah, you don't get that trigger. But yeah, there actually is somewhat of a way around that and we'll talk about that here in a bit. Regardless, of course, any type of Blood Artist effect can also come in really handy for a deck like this. So whether that's Zulport Cutthroat or Blood Artist, etc, etc, yeah, whenever creatures die, you're going to be draining someone. Specifically, Blood Artist says, whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. So again, when any creature dies, you're going to be draining someone and yeah, you're going to be making sure that a lot of creatures die with this kind of a deck. So let's move on and talk about some simple ways to, well, do that. First up, let's talk about Fleshbag Marauder. Now, there are other cards that are pretty much exactly like this, but I'll just bring this one up as the example. It's a 3-1 Zombie Warrior for a 2 and a black, and it says when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. So essentially, this is a 3-mana Edict effect that ensures that basically four creatures, including itself usually, are dying. Now, we don't get to select our opponent's creatures, but yeah, getting four creatures for the price of 3 mana is pretty good. So again, if we've got that Blood Artist in play or the Death Greeter or whatnot, we're going to be gaining a lot of life from doing things like this. And of course, with our opponent sacrificing those creatures, we get some options to steal with our commander. So if they sacrifice something that's got a mana value that's still worth paying that amount of life, well, we're going to take it for ourselves. So yeah, not too bad for a 3-mana creature, and actually there are plenty of other creatures that do this exact same thing at this mana value. Another type of card that you might want to consider, though, is one that's more targeted for removal with Hex. It's a sorcery for 4 black black, and it says destroy 6 target creatures. Now, do keep in mind that you do need 6 legal targets for this, but when you've got those legal targets, well, you can do a lot of work with this with this kind of a commander. You basically just get to pick and choose which creatures you want to kill and potentially steal with your commander. So, in a way, it's definitely like a mass mind control spell for this deck, and yeah, you can definitely change the game in one play with this. As long as you've got enough life to justify taking whatever creatures you want, yeah, you can just take the best six creatures on the board and suddenly they're yours. Or just take a couple of them, you know, and you're still getting rid of some of the problematic creatures on the board as well. Next up, why not just get rid of all the creatures you know outside of your commander with something like Phyrexian Scriptures? It's a saga that costs two black black and its first lore counter says, put a plus plus one counter on up to one target creature, that creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Its second lore counter says, destroy all non-artifact creatures. And its third lore counter says, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. So yeah, basically, this comes in play, we choose our commander, it becomes an artifact to its other types, and then the second lore counter hits, and all non-artifact creatures go bye-bye. 
Now, typically, players aren't playing a ton of artifact creatures unless we're against an artifact kind of deck, but yeah, most of the time, we're just going to blow up every other creature on the board. So then our commander is staying in play, and we have the choice of whatever creatures we want to take, and yeah, again, if we've got enough life, we can take essentially whatever we want, and we're going to be good. Basically, our opponents are left with nothing, and we still got our commander and their best creatures on our side. Even if it's not a complete board wipe, a card like Languish can be fantastic in this deck as well. It's a sorcery for two black black, and it says all creatures get minus four minus four until end of turn. Again, luckily for us, our commander has six toughness, so it's going to survive this, but a lot of creatures out there might not. So with this, we can take out a ton of creatures and have the potential to steal a lot of creatures as well. And again, with these mass board wipe spells, if we've got, you know, a blood artist in play or a death greeter or whatnot, we're going to be gaining a lot of life when all these creatures are dying. Now, of course, another fantastic spell to consider for this deck, if you've got the budget for it, is Toxic Deluge. It's a source for two and a black, and it says, as initial cost to cast this spell, pay X life, all creatures get minus X minus X until end of turn. So this is an incredibly flexible board wipe, and yeah, this can get rid of pretty much whatever creatures we want. Now, obviously, with our commander in play, if we want to keep it around, we've got to keep that to five or less, but yeah, we can make that choice. And again, another not-so-budget card that I do want to bring up, though, is Attrition, which can be incredible with this deck. It's an enchantment for one black black, and it has pay a black, sacrifice a creature, destroy target, non-black creature. So, yeah, this is basically a repeatable targeted removal spell, especially when we're just going to be consistently getting more and more creatures. We can essentially sacrifice a creature, destroy target, non-black creature, and then we can get that into play under our control as a warlock, and then if, you know, something better comes into play, we can sacrifice that to get something else, and yeah, you see where this is going. So yeah, if you've got the budget for this card, it's definitely a great one to consider. But next up, let's go on and talk about that kind of strange combo that I mentioned earlier. Oh, I guess I should say to start, I am 90% sure that this works, but again, rules lawyers out there, please clarify in the comments below if this does or does not, and if it doesn't, my apologies. But since I believe it does, here we go. And this combo specifically is going to revolve around Conspiracy, a sacrifice outlet, and some way to gain you life when creatures die. Conspiracy is an enchantment for three black black, and it reads, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type, the same is true for creature spells you control, and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So essentially, this changes your creature's creature types. So essentially, this is a replacement effect, not an addition. So if you say, Elf, all your creatures are now Elves and they're not anything else. So although our commander does make creatures when they come back Warlocks, well, they're not. Again, if we chose Elves, they'd just be Elves. So then the next piece of the puzzle is a card like Altar of Dementia, a free sacrifice outlet. It's an artifact for two that says, sacrifice a creature, target player mills cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. And then the final part of this combo is something like Dross Harvester, which says, again, whenever a creature card is put into a graveyard from play, you gain two life. So basically, the goal is to get an opponent's creature that has a mana value less than the amount of life that we're going to gain when we sacrifice it. Or I should say, less than or equal to, which in this case, it would be two. So when one of our opponent's creatures dies, if we killed it or whatnot, we get it into play under our control by paying its mana value, and now it's an elf. Because it's an elf, if we sacrifice it with Alter Dementia to mill a player, well, the next part where it says, you know, it would exile since it's a warlock, doesn't happen because it's not a warlock. Again, rules lawyers, please let me know in the comments below if this is going to be correct or not. Regardless, we just milled a player, and again, thanks to Dross Harvester, when that creature died, we gained two life. Now, since that creature wasn't a warlock, it's going to go back to an opponent's graveyard instead of being exiled. And because our commander says, whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, including our side of the battlefield, we can pay life equal to its mana value to get it back into play under our control. So essentially, we just keep doing that over and over again and mill out all of our opponents with Altar of Dementia and that creature. Now, is this a ridiculous convoluted combo that might not actually work because, again, I'm misinterpreting how the rules work with this commander? Maybe. But I just thought it'd be fun to bring up, so there you go. Regardless, one last thing I want to talk about are some commanders that actually might want Lorcan in their deck. First up, let's talk about Hirobi Death's Whale, which says, whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, destroy that creature. Yeah, Hirobi is really good at destroying a ton of creatures. Again, in this kind of a deck, you're going to have a lot of spells that just target and a lot of abilities that just target. So yeah, take out whatever creatures you want, and then you can just steal them. Next up, how about Vivictus' Mani the Dire, which says, when he attacks for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. 
Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player sacrifices a permanent this way, reels the top card of their library, then puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent card. So again, essentially in combination with Lorcan, yeah, pick whatever creatures you want to steal. Or how about Thraxamundar? It says, whenever it attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature. So, yeah, if you've got an opponent that's got some very powerful creatures in play, attack them, they sacrifice a creature, and you can steal it. And speaking of sacrificing creatures, how about Shielded Whispering 1, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and also at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. So yeah, on each trip around the table, each player is going to be sacrificing one creature, and now you've got access to three more creatures to get into play. But now it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on Lorcan Warlock Collector. I really like the design of this commander. Again, it's kind of like a grave betrayal in your command zone, and you can do some really exciting and powerful things with it. Again, you're going to want to gain a ton of life, so you essentially don't have to, you know, make a tough choice when a creature dies that's a very powerful creature and be like, oh, I don't know if I've got enough life for that one. So yeah, make sure you've got enough life gain synergies in your deck so you don't have to have those tough choices. And also, make sure that you've got plenty of ways to destroy creatures so you can get a lot of creatures in play and take over the game and win with this commander. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.